Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Monday morning trading room training slash trading room. Hope everybody had an, a nice weekend. All right, here we are. Let's take a look at what we got going on here this morning. Um, you can see from Friday's session, the afternoon uh, continuing to decline. Friday was a, a pretty bearish day overall. The market settling around the 75.50 zone. The pre-market driving the market down another 50 points. So we have a rather substantial upside gap here. Your first in sync eagle signal occurred right here just a few seconds after the opening bell. So for those of you who like to trade that first in sync signal, there you go. You're in profit already. And there's certainly enough room there to get your trade to a break even type position. So right now, anyways, the market with a much more bearish bent to it. Although it does look like we might be seeing some buyers show up. Oh, not yet. 7,500, of course, was a very popular number a few days ago. Looks like it might be a big number today as well. Let's take a look here. Mark cashing in on a late filter entry trade. So the late filter machine, late en uh, late filter entry machine is working this morning. I'm not quite sure which one you got on board with here. Let's take a look. If you were pre-market. Unless your trend line didn't go out of sync on that particular signal there. Mine did go out of sync. Or maybe it was that one. At any rate, even if you did not get the late filter entry, well, for me, it wasn't. But there was a very nice trend change signal here on the open. That, of course, with your Falcon Swing Trader. <laughs> Mark says it's like an ATM. A different kind of ATM.
Okay, here come the buyers now. Looks like they may try to may try to rally the market up, maybe even get into that gap. Just give them a little bit more structure here first. Some decent signals, you know, for those of you who um, tend to be a little bit more aggressive uh, early on. Uh, certainly no shortage of signals here to take this morning, all of which was some very nice follow through. Of course, we had the, the signal here to start. Oh, no, sorry, that was pre-market. Uh, to start the day, we had here one of our discretionary signals. So those of you who like to do your first InSync Eagle or Raptor signal, here it was right here off about a minute, minute and a half after the open. And uh, you can see very, very nice follow through on that. We come back with a, a pair of number two signals. And of course, now the market reversing and heading the other way off that one as well. So just some really decent trading opportunities. Now that we've reversed, the market is potentially making a cloud crossover of sorts. Cloud not fully crossed, but visually you can see that this is a number one signal in the, in the making. So it would be what we would call the early cloud crossover. Well, the buyers are pushing hard. The problem I have with some of these signals now that the Raptor is starting to look more bullish, and of course the Hawk and the Falcon are full on bullish, but here on the Eagle, yes, I know it is bullish, but I don't know, to me, you know, we've had the downtrend. These kinds of moves sometimes have the tendency to look like a big bear flag. Uh, and a uh, bear flag, of course, would anticipate the market to continue lower. OK, 
Okay, the Raptor now in uh, cloud crossover mode. We're producing, or the next signal that prints will be a number one signal. A next signal to buy, that is. And you know what? There it is. There's the crossover signal. I'll look at it, but only if we can take out this little swing high that we have going on. Rather than take it right on the hash mark, which is so far is, is fine too. It hasn't engaged the signal. But I'm just thinking maybe, just maybe. Uh, entering above this high is more prudent. And then, of course, uh, the bigger question, how far is it going to go? Is it going to try to get into that opening range gap or not? Well, let's try it. I'm going to raise my profit objective. All right, if it goes all the way back to the median line or anywhere near that, that would pretty much try to fill that opening gap. Which of course is a hugely ambitious trade. Had a little flurry of buying go through here on the Geiger counter. It's a tricky spot to sell or, or to buy because we're so close to the high of the morning and that's of course where all that selling took off right out of the open. Nicely done, Mark. Mark says two for two on the late filter entries. I did notice that other one here in the in the Falcon earlier. It was a very pretty one right here. Almost textbook. Nice flat trend line. Oh, and here's another one printing. So. Maybe the uh, the Falcon and the Raptor, the Hawk already in sync. Well, actually, the Eagle is too. The high of the morning is going to be a big deal here. If we can take out this high of the opening range. There we go. You can see some follow through. I'm going to get my... Probably go with my ATR stop. Oh, well, let's get the trade back to break even anyway. I would have hit my high probability target. Yeah. Trying, trying to run this one a little bit. Another bulk block of buying going through here on the Geiger counter, and I think now it might be time to start protecting some of that open profit. Come on, you guys, don't you dare look back now.
I could adjust my ATR. You know, I could dial it back a little bit, make that three instead of two, the default 2.618. Oh, so far so good. Come on, you buyers keep pushing. Make it easy on me today. Okay, well, I didn't get all the way to the filling of the, the gap, but it, it was a good trade all the same. Um, now that what time is it oh quarter to the hour this is usually not a good time for me to trade but that one worked out very nicely Now, I've said this before, but it bears repeating because it's so important, I think. When you're trading, it's not so, trading is not so much about finding multiple opportunities. Rather, it's finding an opportunity you consider to be a high probability opportunity and then capitalizing on it. and hopefully making a profit. If you can make just $100 a day trading, whether that's one $100 trade or two $50 trades, we're ignoring fees and commissions right now, but as a rule of thumb, if you can find just one or two decent opportunities during the day, you can make literally as much money as you want now not overnight of course but once you build up your account to the point where you can trade multiple contracts then then you'll really start cashing in uh, mark said on that last one of those last late filter entries he's been trading five five car trades with two profit targets with a runner mark did not start that way <laughs> You know, it's true. You have to crawl before you can walk and walk before you can run. It is a process. So my day would be done on, on that last trade. Um, we 
banked a couple hundred dollars on a nice little single move. Uh, those of you who like your first in sync signals, you would have been done before me. And had you had a runner in play, you would have done even much better. I may have to start trying those first in sync signals. I've been a little gun shy just because early, early signals tend to scare me off. But my goodness, they'll work four out of the five days. That's got to be worthwhile. All right, it's starting to look as though The sellers are squashing, well, not squashing, but putting the brakes on the buyers. How can I say that? Well, look at what's going on here with your hawk. So our bar colors, trend lines, everything is kind of flipped over. we got a lot of yellow bars coming in here. Uh, the Falcon, uh, once again, we got a trend change, a very short trend change. Now it's struggling. Once more, the eagle, we're almost back to the hard edge, where, of course, we anticipate a reaction. Likewise, here with the raptor, we're starting to see some yellow bars clustering. We're getting a bit of a pullback. And even visually, you can see that there's a bit of a struggle. Now, I'm not counting the buyers out. Far from it. After the market tanked, through the overnight and first thing in the morning, the buyers have done well to push it back. I'm just not sure where the next good opportunity is going to come from. Well, here we got an, a couple of number three signals. Uh, the Geiger counter was green here just a moment ago. And now we have a, even a second push opportunity, which means that we let the signal engage, we see where the market reacts, and then we use that as our signal bar. So your trade would look something like that. It's not uh, an unreasonable looking trade, that's for sure. Well, here goes the Geiger counter again, getting a lot more bullish. I may just watch this one. Uh, it's also starting to look a little bit like a test of the extreme, right? a retest of the high, and now we're heading lower. It's not usually what we want to see. All right, there they go. Here comes the here come the buyers. Let's see if they can get it above the high du jour. Stop placement for this one is a little tricky too. Okay, the Geiger counter is still green, so that's encouraging. And here comes the push. Oh, look at that. Just holding right at the high. Stinkers. Get up there. So obviously this first number three signal um, would have already reached its profit objective. 
it seems as though it is paying to be aggressive today. Okay, the market's up. If you're running an auto break even, you probably hit that. And we're just about to kiss it. There we go. Oh, all right. It did turn out to be a very nice little trade. I think on a day like today, it's going to be advisable to stay with the trend as much as possible. And right now, the trend looking bullish. Wow, another beautiful rally. Well done. And uh, they're certainly far enough into that opening range gap now to qualify as a fill. I was looking up here toward the median line and we may still get there. Oh, although we're getting a little bit more, a little bit more bearishness. I think a few traders are recognizing that the gap is almost complete and no one wants to be the last one out. Well, last one out before a reversal. Yeah, Mark, you're absolutely correct. No shortage of opportunities this morning. <laughs> oh, Steve. Yeah, Stephen, I wish uh, I could say it's never happened to me. Stephen says I was long from 7505 and my profits were up $50 per contract. So I moved my stop to break even and got stopped out. Yeah, I I feel for you. I have done the same thing. But, you know, uh, that's where these discretionary signals come into play. If you feel that you got tagged out too early, that the trade is still viable, you can hop on board one of these discretionary signals, these follow-up signals. And for those of you looking to add to an existing position, people sometimes uh, ask me, where can I add to my trade? Again, these follow-up signals are very often a good place to look to add to your position. All right, the Hawk making a, a rather deep retrace and the Falcon now turning over a little bit. At least the trend line starting to change it up.
we'll see what they try to do from here. And the hawk getting a little bit more bearish, which is what you would expect from the scalping tool. It's going to come through with a signal before. All right, here we go with the falcon. We have a trend change signal and a uh, counter trend signal here on the raptor as well. I'm a little bit late on both of those, but we'll just see here. Target for the counter trend would be the hard edge, and I think that would be pretty close to your profit objective as well. Yes, it is. Um, the only reason I might consider the uh, counter trend signal here is because the Geiger counter needle was red. We had a lot of bearishness go through the market. Normally, I'm not, <laughs> not a fan of counter trend signals. And I chuckle as I say that because you'll see me burn myself quite a few times on counter trend trades here in the trading room. They're just so darn tempting. They're the potato chips of trading. You know you shouldn't, but you do it anyway. Yeah, look at that. Look at the with trend signal now. That's the other reason I don't like counter trend signals is they always block you from a possible with trend trade. Which is always more desirable if you can get it. All right, we'll put that put that away for now. <laughs> yeah. Like Mark says, you can't eat just one. That's the thing with the counter trend trades too, it seems. You start with those and you just can't stop. Now, it's not to say counter trend trades won't work, but the conditions have to be just right. You have to see a decent test of the extreme. You have to see a broad cloud. maybe even a two, three, two setup. If we come back with a short signal, another number two signal, that might make for a stronger counter trend move. kind of stuck around this primary um, resistance zone right now. Or I guess technically it's primary support, that blue line right there. Skewering the market at 7530. They seem to be Happy to be there. I would welcome a bigger pullback, perhaps to the hard edge around, I don't know, 75, 20, 22.
Wow, we keep coming back with all these buy signals. All right, let's see if we get another hard edge bounce. Oh, actually here on the uh, Falcon right now, we've got another late filter entry signal. Now this one I would probably, oh, look at that. Don't run away on me now. I would probably take above that little swing high. And if I wanted to try to stretch this one out to my original target, which was near the median line, that would pretty much fill that opening gap that we saw. Of course, I'm taking my chances now rather than bank my profit, which I would just tag, just tag my profit target. Go buyers, go buyers, come on. No, they're not going to give me the swing. Darn it. Uh, Floyd's asking if I saw his email. I haven't checked my email this morning yet, Floyd, but I will take a look right now. Yeah, all right. Okay, we'll put that away. I gotta clear all the uh, garbage out of my inbox here. There we go. Found your email, Floyd. Hold on. Okay. <clears throat> Great question here from Floyd. All right. Floyd asks, when you enter a trade and you put your stop lost two swings back how many bars in the profitable direction do you wait before you adjust the stop to the atr or parabolic the last trade you did today was profitable while i lost money on the same signal because i got impatient i don't want to trade my stop loss two swings back when the trade becomes profitable all right this is always a difficult decision because as traders, 
well, let's face it, we don't want to lose money, right? That's we're doing this to make money, not lose money. My advice is going to be easier said than done, unfortunately, because it's going to run counter to your natural tendency to protect your capital. So let's say you see a signal here, this uh, number three signal, you figure, okay, the market's with trend, here's a hard edge bounce, I'll give it a go. So I'm going to enter here, there is swing one right here. Swing two is actually back here somewhere. Now, you should not start micromanaging. You should not say, okay, well, that's swing two. That's swing one. This is swing two. It may well work out, but it's still kind of close. What you need to bear in mind is that the market, it will have a tendency to try to retest a swing point and it will very often retest the first swing uh, before the buyers wake up. <laughs> if you keep your stop two swings back or as far back as you can manage, what you're doing is you're giving your trade the greatest probability of success. When traders are talking about you know, uh, positive risk reward ratios, where they are potentially earning twice as much as they have at risk, that's all well and good, but very often to set up a positive trade like that, you end up strangling your position and you re severely reduce your probabilities that the trade will work out in the first place. So Floyd's question is, well, when do I roll my, my stops up? I usually roll my stops either when I have a fair amount of profit that I feel I need to protect, or I've seen a minor swing. So in this case, we can see the market went up a few bars and now here comes a minor swing, right? We've got the sellers showing up and I know they're gonna to try to push the market back down. This is the part where it gets really difficult because your first instinct will be to roll your stops up and get stopped out early. Now that's okay if that is, suits your trading personality, if you're okay getting stopped out and you're okay trying to re-enter on another signal, then that's fine. But if your objective is to try to hang on to this trade and try to get it either to your profit target or to capitalize on a bit of a runner, you're just going to have to be more patient with it. So what I do is when I see this swing develop, I let the sellers have their way, knowing that the buyers did rally the market, right? The, the market was up, came down, the buyers did start to rally the market again. And there is a very real possibility that the sellers are going to try to challenge this low. Therefore, I have to keep my stops away from this low because what will happen very often is the market will come down and it will break by a few ticks and then guess what? It will take off the other direction again. This happened to me, <coughs> excuse me, this happened to me too many times before I finally wised up and it still happens to me on occasion but not nearly as often as it used to. Remember, your stop loss is not a loss unless it gets hit. Your stop loss is your safety net. That's why it's important you know, to cap it at a certain risk amount. 
so that even if you're wrong about the trade, you haven't damaged your trading account. All right, so still back to the original question, when do I roll my stops? Well, knowing that the buyers rallied, knowing that I'm with the buyers on this trade, I'm going to look for the next buy, the next evidence that the buyers are going to rally the market. By the way, just as a really quick aside, if I took this short right here, my initial stops would be up here. Guess where my stops would be now? You're, if you guessed right there, you would have guessed correctly. And depending, you know, because it's a counter trend trade, depending how aggressive I want it to be, I could take that next bar and roll my stops there as well. But we, I'll try not to get too confusing here. Okay, so now the buyers have shown up. Is it time to roll my stops yet? Well, I wouldn't. Not yet anyways, because there's very little evidence that the buyers are controlling the market just yet. If I get another bar up, then I'll probably consider rolling my stops up. Oh, and you see what happens? We don't get the bar up, rather we get a little bit more selling pressure. Okay, here come the buyers again. Okay, it's looking more favorable. Usually at this point, at the second attempt to rally the market, I will get more aggressive with my stops. So I will either bring my stops to here, or if I think that the, the buyers aren't going to be able to take out the highs or take out this last swing high, I will take my stops up to here. How do I know the difference? Well, sometimes you don't. Sometimes it's a entirely a gut call, whichever one you are most comfortable with. Sometimes I will reference the Geiger counter. If I saw the Geiger counter like this, where the needle's all red, I would probably opt for the tighter stop. If, however, the needle was green, I would probably try to give the trade a little bit more breathing room and I may leave my stop back here a little bit. I know, seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? And yet, that's pretty much how you have to trade. Okay, so now the market goes up. Okay, good, the buyers are making a push. If I'm running my profit target, if I'm gonna be all in, all out, then I'm definitely bringing my stops up, maybe even going to break even. Because uh, if it fails at this point, as we get back here, then there's a very good chance the market's going to reverse. So at the very least, I'll bring my stops below there. And they flinch just before my profit target. So. Honestly, at this point, I would probably bring my stops in to break even and be take a breakout, uh, a break even um, trade. Because what's happening now is we're seeing the second attempt from the sellers to push the market down. So it's usually on those second attempts that I make my, my decision to roll. So if we go back here, <clears throat> this was the first attempt of the buyers to recover the market. You can see it didn't take. The second attempt, this is kind of do or die for the bulls now. If this next bar shows up is a bearish bar, then the buyers are going to lose their grip and at the very least the market's going to try to challenge that low so knowing that i'll say okay time to roll stops either to here or if i tend to be if i feel i need to be a little bit more aggressive on the trade below this swing here 
So if you keep your eye on the, the second attempt to move the market, you'll probably, probably be on the right side of the trade. Now, I think this morning, as it turns out, had I rolled my trade to break even, I think I would have got tagged early before the reverse. Yeah, so there's the break even, and then we got a couple signals, and then the market goes higher. So it's not it's not foolproof, but the rule of thumb is the more room you can give your market, the more likely you are to become profitable. I know it doesn't seem right, and yet that's how it is. So I hope that answers your question, Floyd. If not, please let me know, and I will try to find you another example. Your most uncomfortable time in the trade will be when you first take it, because that's when you have your your biggest stop going on. Mark says, good example of what you're talking about happened in the last late filter entry. Yeah, I think this is the signal here Mark's talking about. The same kind of signal, if you had played it really tight oh okay well it did work out but a lot of times what will happen is you will see uh, the market do a little bit of a pullback you know it'll fill and then it'll pull back and you get tagged out and it's oh and yet if you had left a slightly wider stop you would have been able to reach your profit objective uh, the good thing about the DTS and the Raptor tools is that very often they pick up on immediate momentum. You know, they they try to time the trade to your advantage so you get in just before the market's about to move. And many times you can get by with a tighter stop, but... My advice to you is to keep it back as as far as you can. If you're looking at, say, the hawk here, and you don't want to go, uh, see, with the hawk, you can't do two swings because your swings will be too tight. So here's your first micro macro cross. Oh, no, I guess actually you could do two swings here. So you could do a swing and a swing. And I apologize for all the background noise. The uh, city's doing some work down the street, so there's a lot of a lot of unnecessary traffic. Um, this would kind of be the ideal stop placement. If you feel that's too far, look for your crests either in the micro line or the macro line, and you can use that that crest as a place to put your stop. But if you're using risk percent mode, remember your dollar amount does not change. And then likewise here on the Falcon, you have your trend line cresting. And that's very often a decent place to put a stop if you feel that you can't afford to go all the way up here. You can look for the crest in the trend line.
Um, hey, Tony. <laughs> nice to see you back in the room. Tony says, good morning, Eric. Well, good morning, Tony. Uh, since it's been so long since I've been able to participate here, I see you're pretty much trading the raptor. Are you no longer scalping the hawk? You know what, Tony? I am using the other tools, but I do tend to focus on the raptor a little bit more. That's true. And that's because the probably the majority of the room members right now are raptor owners. So I'm doing it more for their benefit. But you DTS owners, please, if you have questions or you need me to show you something, please ask. No, I love the Hawk. The Hawk Scalper is one of my favorite tools. If you're looking for low stress trades, it's really tough to beat scalping. You get a decent scalp signal like that first micro macro cross. And of course, because your profit objective is so reasonable, we're only looking for 10 ticks after all $50, it's more often than not, you will be able to take multiple contracts and not have to endure too much in the way of pullbacks. This is actually a pretty good example for trade management as well. The market comes down, does not hit my profit objective, makes this little swing. Well, this now is the second push on the part of the sellers to move the market lower, isn't it? This was the first push, the one that initiated the signal. This now is the second push. At this point, or at the next bar, I would roll my stop from up here to down here. Oop, down here. So if this trade reversed on me now, I have taken my risk from 2% or approximately $400 down to 1% or approximately $200. Losing 1% of your capital will not wipe you out as a trader. It's those big owies. <laughs> the ones where you've just scrambled 8 or 10% of your trading capital. Those are the ones that you need to step back and say, what was I thinking? Here now, look at this bar. This is the third attempt by the sellers to move the market down. So that would be also a good place to roll your stop. And then you finally get the follow through to your profit target. So try to follow the market, try to interpret what it is you're seeing, who is in control of the market. Sometimes you won't be able to tell. Sometimes you'll look at the the chart like this and it'll just be a big jumbled mess. That's okay. But recognize that it is a big jumbled mess and maybe, you know, maybe we should be standing aside for a moment. Um, oh, I think in uh, in response to the stop placement, uh, Mark makes the comment, this is probably the one thing I struggle with as well. After plenty of screen time and identifying what the high probability trades need to breathe, then you can see where your stops need to be for the trade to work, if that makes sense. So I think what Mark is saying is when he's looking at a trade, you know, if you're looking at a, a runaway market like this, and here's a late filter entry signal, you know, where do I need to place this stop if the market decides to back up on me? Knowing that if I place my stop there, I'm risking $400. And if I place my stop here, I'm still risking about $400. What changes? Well, your profit, 
because now we're trading one contract instead of six and your probabilities of success because this trade has a greater probability of success than this trade. But yeah, you will start to get a feel for how, how far your stops need to go back. Like I say, a rule of thumb, if you're totally lost, go two swings back. There's swing one, there's swing two, and if that looks a little cozy, go, go one more. Let's put it this way. Your stops will never be too big. If you're controlling your risk via money management via a certain percentage of your capital, your, your stops will never be too big. You can always, you can always bring them in, but it's much more difficult to back them off. Okay, we've had a bit of a sideways skid here now. Oh, and here comes another little bit of a bullish rally. Buyers all over the sellers today, but uh, we'll see. We're, my concern is that maybe because we've topped out kind of in this region here before, another swing lower might encourage a little bit more selling. see what they do with that. Of course, if they stay above here now, let's say we get a little bit of a hard edge bounce or, um, you know, here's just your regular follow-up signal with the, with the Raptor.
Oh, look at that. I'm going to be too late on that move. Nice little macro pullback here on the Hawk. I was looking for a buying opportunity. Kind of totally missed that one. And look at the Geiger counter here. We're, we're revving up pretty good. All right, here a little bit more of a pullback now. Sellers getting a little bit more excited. I guess technically we filled that gap. That might spark a little extra. Selling, maybe. All right, well, things are certainly getting a little bit conflicted. Look at that chunk of selling that went through there on the Geiger counter, that was wild. Okay, I wasn't going to do a short signal here today, but maybe I will. Uh, here on the Hawk, we got a first micro macro cross to sell. Why am I looking short? Well, you can see we're starting to violate some of the swing lows. Remember how I said uh, the market will challenge the first swing low? So, well, here's the challenge for the buyers. Here come the buyers. And what I would be looking for now is evidence that the buyers can't hold on to the market anymore. Here is a very early number one signal developing. That's just the warning dot. We don't have the complete signal just yet. We should get a trend change signal here on the Falcon. Yeah, tr trend change on the Falcon and of course the, uh, the Hawk already full on bear mode. I'm gonna just pop in with a short order. I'm gonna lock in a single contract there we go. And now I can bring my stop up to where it needs to be. And we'll bring this trade down a little bit. Maybe take it down here to the next uh, support zone. Oh, this might be asking a lot. No! Darn it. Should have just taken my profit. Okay, so I know some of you are scratching your heads. Well, how in the world did he know the market was going to head lower? Okay, a couple of clues. First off, look at the context. So we went from an overtly bullish market 
to a market that spent a fair amount of time going sideways. Right, a lot of back and forth. Then we saw the market top out at the highs. And again, this was a little bit more obvious here on the Eagle, where we see the market keeps trading around 75.40 and can't get much higher. Remember, we don't want to be splitting hairs here. Try to take a look at the big picture. So uh, the market tries to get above here. It, it got knocked down here, 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 and here. And then the final death blow came right here where we got the test of the extreme. And that's what we were watching here on the Falcon the hawk and on the raptor. So here was the test of the extreme. Now all of a sudden we broke the low, the prior low, and then we come out with our number one signal. Quick little move lower, and now we see that the buyers have recovered the market again. So we may actually end up going into a bit of a sideways trading range from here. which again is typical of this type of day where there's been a big rally A little bit of a puzzle now. Look how neutral everything has gotten. All right, there might be another uh, another sell attempt here coming up shortly. You can see we're back into the hard edge. The 
Falcon producing a late filter or in the midst of producing a late filter entry signal to sell. The Hawk, a little conflicted though, we had that yellow bar spoil the macro pullback signal. Okay, and now some of our signals uh, not firing. So that late filter entry signal, even though it did print, um, not, not engaging just yet. And here the, the uh, number three signal on the Raptor, likewise, pulling up somewhat. All right, here we go with yet another number three signal. So we've got the market pushing off of this 75.20. In fact, I should put the signal in or the order in and then I'll explain it. So we got the market keep keeps pushing off of the 75.20 area. And now we're seeing a little bit of a push back lower. Now this is not a guaranteed trade because see the market's pushing back here from 75.20 again and this is going to be true with all your trades there's always going to be that element where you just don't know right that's trading we're trying to deal with future events all right let's see if we can get any kind of follow through on this now. Okay, so my trade's not to break even, but I would, f oh, <laughs> see, I'm talking too much and not uh, trading enough. I would force my trade to break even on the next opportunity. So there we go. And I'll take the break even tag. Um, I, again, I was just, you know, the market was not following through off these, this obvious area of support. Uh, looks like maybe I was a little bit too quick. We'll see. But those are the kinds of decisions that you kind of have to make as you go. All right, gang, uh, I'm going to close up the room here a few minutes early today. I do have an appointment I need to get to. And uh, I will see you again tomorrow. So we'll talk to you then. Bye for now.